Hi, YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Momming in Manhattan. You're hearing Kayla's voice. You're looking at Linus. We wanted to talk to you about our birth story today. Linus and I had an intervention-free birth. What I mean by that is no epidural, no painkillers, no forceps. His heartbeat was not continuously monitored and no one cut open my abdomen and uterus to pull him out. Those options seem much more extreme to me than just doing what women have been doing since the dawn of humanity. There are some legitimate reasons why a woman would need to have a medicalized birth, but I am a healthy woman that had no discernible pregnancy risks. If you are considering natural childbirth, I would definitely encourage it. There is really nothing to fear. Millennia of women have been doing this. Women actually have hormones such as oxytocin, relaxin, adrenaline that are all released at the right moments to help us through the intense sensations. Most of the drugs they pump into a body during labor in a medicalized birth actually slow labor down. I was able to go from four centimeters to 10 centimeters dilated in less than three hours, less than an hour of pushing to get Linus out. Most of the interventions in a hospital just lead to further interventions, which is why we have an astronomical c-section rate. All pregnancies, all births are different. So I can only speak from my singular experience when I describe the process as painful. Yes. What I would describe as real pain, that wow, factor only lasted about three hours. Also invigorating, inspiring, empowering. A few days after Linus was born, a friend asked if breastfeeding her and I responded, nothing will ever hurt again. Now that I can practice vinyasa yoga again, I really believe that. In awkward poses, the instructors will often say things like, let the heat build. This is normally how life shows up. You can handle anything for 17 seconds. And now I'm usually thinking, you don't even know. Here's the whole story. Obviously, I wasn't induced. My water broke Hollywood gush style, which apparently only happens in 15% of labors. I had been having contractions for some hours every day for over a week, so I was grateful for this unmistakable signal. This was 5.30 a.m. on Christmas. The plan was to birth on a birthing center floor of a hospital. After speaking with my midwife on Christmas morning, she said that I shouldn't go into the hospital until I could no longer speak through the contractions. I was contracting about every five minutes, but they were of an uninteresting intensity. So James and I decided to try to go back to sleep. We prepared for birth with hypnobirthing. Basically, you're supposed to hypnotize yourself out of feeling the pain. We listened to a book and did all these activities and listened to the tracks for birthing and preparation. Since I'd been contracting more frequently at night, I was used to sleeping through them. I would just tell myself, you can be uncomfortable and pissed off about it and thus exhausted later, or you can just experience discomfort and go to sleep. So since I could talk through ease still, through all the tightenings I was experiencing, I did try to go back to bed, but that's when I discovered that not all contractions are created equally. In labor, my body mandated I rock and sway or drop down to tabletop position in time with the waves. Even with a hypnobirthing track playing, sleep eluded me, so I decided to take a bath. In the bath, the pain all but ceased. I remembered what was said of water, that it slowed the birthing process. I thought, like, who cares if it takes 24 hours to have a baby if you can't feel any of it. As soon as I got out, I was just bum-rushed with intensity. The water didn't seem to cause the pain to dissipate. It boxed it all up. This bottleneck of both pain and amniotic fluid just split open. I used to think that when one's water broke, that was that. I pictured a gush of water and perhaps a slow trickle for the next few hours. Instead, it's like a continuous faucet. I soaked the bed and a panty liner in a matter of minutes, drenched through a cloth pad, and realized I had nothing that could dam up my junk. So that's probably why I got into the bathtub to begin with. But since I got out, I had to wake up James and send him to the drugstore in the corner. I at first wanted to go with him, but I just feared having to drop to the floor in the middle of the street. I spent the rest of the morning and early afternoon managing. I read through my positive affirmations and birthing goals, rocked and swayed, cat cowed, looked at a vision board designed to release oxytocin, remembered the saints, especially Mary, on the feast day of the Lord's nativity, and asked that they all pray for us 
us. Nothing offered relief like the bath had, but everything helped. <laughs> you almost fell asleep and you farted yourself awake. <sighs> James' parents came over for around an hour and my perception of the intensity was lessened because my mind was elsewhere. James and his dad went and bought pancakes and scrambled tofu from a little hole in the wall and I ate them even though my mother-in-law would have surgery. I didn't want to put that option out in the universe. After they left, the contractions seemed to increase in intensity and frequency. I could barely speak, so I just put on a 32-minute hypnobirthing track and James rubbed my back. I continued to have contractions, but they didn't feel painful, maybe constricting, maybe uncomfortable, at most a 4 out of 10. I was so calm that James thought they had ceased entirely, and I actually had to reassure him that no hypnobirthing would not cause my labor to slow to a complete halt. As I was assuring him of this, another contraction came on and I knew it was time to call the midwife and I limped to the bathroom to urinate for like the hundredth time that day. The hospital bag had been overpacked the day prior. It had necessities like clothing as well as meditative like the icon of the now sainted Romero items that demonstrated how much wishful thinking I had. James packed a tote bag of snacks and water and we waited for a break in contraction so I could get down the stairs. Inside the cab I put the relaxing lady back on. The hypnosis was still quite effective at this point and we got from the east side downtown to the west side midtown in under 20 minutes thanks to the lack of holiday traffic. 2.47 p.m. we beat the midwife to the hospital. The contractions felt like they were weakening again as I filled out paperwork. After being shown a little room and given a gown, they strapped machines to monitor Linus's heartbeat and my contractions. I heard Linus's heart stopping every time my uterus squeezed him too hard. My midwife said I was four centimeters dilated, 70% effaced. She said I was contracting every three to five minutes. They only felt weaker because I was in an unfamiliar environment with unusual stimuli so the mind is just kind of funny like that we were cleared to go to the birthing center and I stood up just shocked by the amount of my blood and guts that were on those butcher papers they lay across the hospital tables. My midwife was really pleased about it though. She was like, oh good, it's the bloody show. When we arrived one flight down via elevator, there was a nurse who told me she was already drawing my bath. I told her I love you already. She was going to be in the room every half an hour to check on me and Linus she would check on his heart after every single contraction when I was actively pushing to ensure he had recovered. This just seems infinitely better than listening to the heart stop every time your uterus squeezes like you would in a medicalized birth because I would have personally had a panic attack if I had to hear his heart stop beating every minute. I climbed into the bathtub. I did my best to relax. I left the hypnobirth being plain but it was becoming less and less effective. Oh God, I can't do this. I'm doing this, so obviously I can. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Mother Mary, pray for me. I hurt. There really wasn't enough time in between contractions at this point to regain any semblance of composure. I quickly took back my assumption regarding water births. About an hour into this, James left to go get me some electrolytes and go get himself some dinner. He was afraid he would miss the birth, but I was like, oh no, these things take hours. But it actually... Didn't take that long. Alone, I had a chance to notice all of the red bits floating in the water. I was momentarily mortified by the amount of my guts floating around me, but I was in too much pain to really dwell on the seemingly unsanitary. James returned with coconut water, chocolate coconut water, and Chinese food. He took pictures of what looked to be a dying woman in a bathtub, and I tried to get out to pee. The contractions were coming back to back before I was pain-free from a subsiding wave a new one would begin to swell. I realized I was unlikely to be truly between contractions ever again, so James helped me out of the tub. The nurse happened to arrive just then and said she needed to draw my blood, so after I went to the toilet, I climbed on the queen-size bed. Just felt absolute agony. No buffer between me and the reality of childbearing. All of the pain existed.
She drew my blood, she checked Linus's heart, and then James tried to help me back into the bathtub, but I couldn't stand up. I tried a couple of times, and then I screamed. I let out a sound that I didn't know humans could make, and the midwife ran into the room, put on a glove. I know that sound, I need to check you. And then she said matter-of-factly to the nurse, 10 centimeters plus one. She looked at me and James snapped on another glove and said, we're having a baby. Ooh, it just got real. So here I am, naked on a bed with James, the midwife, a nurse. I'm about to participate in what is both the most miraculous and most routine event in the natural world. The midwife explained I would need to push. She said that my pushes should be silent, that I should inhale, hold, push, inhale, hold, push, inhale, hold, push, breathe regular. It really was that simple and so difficult. Between contractions, there was enough time for a breath before I would nod at her that the next one was coming, she would hold a leg or tell James to give one to me, have me roll from side to side to my back, just trying to accommodate my apparently still active son in there, spinning around. I was speechless for perhaps the third time in my entire life. The relaxing lady hypnobirthing tracks might as well have been the pre-calculus teacher from my high school who with astonishing regularity made teenagers cry, only the tracks were easier to ignore than the teacher, barely processed them over the season pangs. Nonetheless, she was playing as the midwife and James kept encouraging me to relax and I absolutely could not. My legs kept cramping. They would try to rub them out. I couldn't even express to them that the cramping was still intense the whole time. I would look in the direction of James or the nurse or the midwife and all of them just kept assuring me I was doing a really great job. It sounded like a lie. I was sure I looked like a dying farmed animal. At the time believed I felt just marginally better than one. But it felt good to feel patronized. Like when Buffy tells Spike she loves him and Spike says, no you don't, but thanks for saying it just before he burns to death saving the world. And the one thought that I was compelled to express verbally through all of this was that I thought my butt was going to explode. She did explain the three pushes. She said the first was to push his head back to where it had just been in the last cycle, then to push his head further, and then to reinforce the further. Two steps forward, one step back. This is how we gain our initial independence, our entry into the world. At some point, the midwife made me take a break from pushing. <laughs> and the break really showed you that the pain of childbirth can go to 11. These go to 11. As painful as contractions are, not pushing with them when it comes time to push makes them seem infinitely so. The second time... The midwife asked me to when I knew what I was in for. It was quite difficult to comply as I felt Linus continue to struggle for freedom even in my attempted stillness. She made me drink some water. She told me I would feel a burning sensation. This was a couple cycles of pushing after the burning sensation already began. The head began to crown and she asked me if I wanted to touch it and I thought I shook my head no but I must not have because she asked again. I really just didn't have the energy to move my hands down there afraid of being naughty nauseated by the blood and guts down there too. I continued to push his head. The burning sensation increased and then I screamed because something inside of me ripped. And then his head was out with one final push. The rest of him fell out like a slinky down a flight of stairs. 6.44 p.m. on Christmas Day 2018. They put him on my chest covered in his mom's guts. And he pooped on his mom immediately. We delayed cord clamping until the cord was done pulsing and then the midwife peer pressured James into cutting it later. I said I would feel a need to push again for the placenta. I told her I already did and the placenta fell out quite easily after a baby. The midwife said I tore in an unusual pattern but only on the inside. She also told me I didn't poop and I told her I didn't really care what with all the blood and guts I'd been experiencing all day already. She had to spend an entire hour sewing up my insides longer than the actual pushing took. Apparently I looked like a jigsaw puzzle in there. I only tore on the inside, so even if there had been a initial cut there, like they preemptively do for some women, it wouldn't have helped me. I felt more empowered than traumatized, not known my own capacity. Society has definitely done all it can to strip women of their force, convince us that we are helpless, inadequate. The prominence of medicalized birth in this country is just more of the same. One more way society is stripping women of their very womanhood. If you're offended by that remark, you probably feel like I'm attacking you. I'm not attacking you, I'm just 
expressing my opinion. Feel free to agree to disagree and move on with our lives. When Linus was born, I felt less vulnerable, more impenetrable than I ever had in my life. And the adrenaline of it all would not wear off for hours. I personally would not trade that experience to have less pain. Birthing is a natural process. It's the only way any mammal has propagated its species since mammals existed. I don't believe we were put on this earth just to experience happiness. I believe we were put here to experience life. As Toni Morrison once explained in someone's commencement speech, I think there is so much more to life than happiness. I personally believe that most people who strive for only happiness end up experiencing mostly boredom. Anyway, let me know about your birthing experience in the comments below. Natural vaginal C-section. I know a lot of people have the intention of going vaginal and then there's complications and they end up needing a C-section, take care of a baby while recovering from surgery. That takes a special kind of mental and physical strength that I thank God I didn't have to tap into. Don't forget to subscribe if you like our content or if you hate our content and you just want to watch that pisses you off definitely subscribe and leave a lot of angry comments as well that would be good till next time youtube bye